Ola grade sixes. So I'm going to reread some of what my mom read to you yesterday, and then we're just going to keep on going. Okay. The world is a whopping big place, the BFG said. It has a hundred different countries. The Giants is clever. They is careful not to be skiddling off to the same country too often. They is always switch fiddling around. Even so, Sophie said. Do not forget, the BFG said. The human beings is disappearing everywhere all the time, even without the Giants is guzzling them up. Human beings is killing each other much quicker than the Giants is doing it. But they don't eat each other, Sophie said. Giants isn't eating each other either, the BFG said. Nor is Giants killing each other. Giants is not very lovely, but they is not killing each other. Nor is Crocodown Diddly's killing other Crocodown Diddly's. Nor is the Pussycat killing Pussycats. They kill mice, Sophie said. Ah, but they is not killing their own kind, the BFG said. Human beings is the only animal that is killing their own kind. Don't poisonous snakes kill each other? Sophie said. She was searching desperately for another creature that behaved as badly as the human. Even poisonous snakes is never killing each other, the BFG said. Nor is the most fearsome creatures, like tigers and rhinoceroses, None of them is ever killing their own kind. Has you ever thought about that? Sophie kept silent. I is not understanding human beings at all, the BFG said. You is a human being, and you is saying it is grizzly and a horror guess for giants to be eating human beings, right or left, Sophie said, right. But human beings is squishing each other all the time, the BFG said. They is shooting guns and going up in aerial planes to drop their bombs on each other's heads every week. Human beings is always killing other human beings. He was right. Of course he was right. And Sophie knew it. She was beginning to wonder whether hum humans were actually any better than giants. Even so, she said, defending her own race. I think it's rotten that those foul giants should go off every night to eat humans. Humans have never done them any harm. That is what the little piggy wig is saying every day, the BFG answered. He is saying, I has never done any harm to the human beings, so why should he be eating me? Oh dear, Sophie said. The human beings is making rules to suit themselves, the BFG went on. But the rules they is making do not suit the little piggy wiggies. Am I right or left? Right, Sophie said. Giants is also making rules. Their rules is not suiting the human beings. Everybody is making their own rules to suit themselves. But you don't like it that those beastly giants are eating humans every night, do you? Sophie asked. I do not, the BFG answered firmly. One right is not making two less. Is you quite cozy down there in my pocket? I'm fine, Sophie said. Then suddenly, once again, the BFG went into the magical top gear of his. He began hurtling forward with phenomenal leaps. His speed was unbelievable. The landscape became blurred again, and again, Sophie had to duck down out of the whistling gale to save her head from being blown off her shoulders. She crouched in the pocket and listened to the wind screaming past. It came knifing in through the tiny peephole in the pocket and whooshing around like a hurricane. But this time, the BFG didn't stay in Top Gear long. It seemed as though he had, uh, he had had some barrier to cross.
a vast mountain perhaps, or an ocean, or a great desert. But having crossed it, he once again slowed down to his normal gallop, and Sophie was able to pop her head up and looked out once more at the view. She noticed immediately that they were now in an altogether paler oh, country. Sorry, The sun had disappeared above a film of vapor. The air was becoming cooler every minute. The land was flat and treeless, and there seemed to be no color in it at all. Every minute the mist became thicker, the air became colder still, and everything became paler and paler until soon there was nothing but gray and white all around them. They were in a country of swirling mist and ghostly vapors. There was some sort of grass underfoot, but it was not green. It was ashy gray. There was no sign of a living creature and no sound at all, except for the soft thud of the BFG's footsteps as he hurtled on through the fog. Suddenly, he stopped. We is here at last, he announced. He bent down and lifted Sophie from his pocket and put her on the ground. She was still in her nighty, and uh, she was still in her nighty, and her feet were bare. She shivered and stared around her at the swirling mist and ghostly vapors. Where are we? she asked. We is in dream country, the BFG said. This is where all the dreams is being. So that's the end of this chapter, and I'll see you next week. Bye!